Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today is episode 2 of the JDA bot tutorial and today I'll be teaching you how to make a clear command in JDA. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's get started by going back into Eclipse just like we did in last episode. I'll have the link down below in the description for last episode's source code as well as this episode's source code so you can just cross-reference them and see what things changed. Um, but I'll show you how to do it. Basically, since last episode, I just removed the commands file here because we're going to be creating a new package for commands specifically. So this is the same main file, just with a different token. I'll give you a new token so you can mess around. Some people did some things with the tokens. So that was nice. Uh, so just do it again. Anyway, uh, so anyway, we have a package here for our general stuff, which has our general main class. I also want to make a package for commands. Now remember, packages can store similar types of code. So for example, this package can store commands. And we can have one for events, listeners, but that'll be in a future episode that I'll make later on. But for now, we make a commands package. Right click on the commands package and since we're making a clear command, we want to title the command clear. So we've got clear. Now remember, all commands have to be listeners, just like we learned in last episode. So in order to have a listener, we just gotta extend listener adapter. As simple as that. I still haven't learned how to type, by the way, so it's gonna take some getting used to here. There we go. That's not how you import. We've imported listener adapters. So now we're just gonna create a listener method in here. So public, ugh, public void, and then on guild message received. That's gonna be our event. We're gonna use guild message received event, and then guild message. And then I'm just gonna shortcut and and then we're just title event and then we've created our event method. So now now we have our, our command method ready. So now we just gotta check for the name of the command. So, so now let's split it up into arguments just like we did in the last episode. There's a little bit of a difference here in this one. Uh, last time I accidentally messed up during recording and I put a different thing. You'll see in a second, we're just gonna get content draw here. I put a different thing for dot split here. So I put this with a space here, um, but you should usually put uh, the ba two backslashes and S plus. Now that basically counts all spaces as just a single break between arguments, because if you have it as just a space, it's, it's gonna mess up basically. So just do this in place of what I had in the last episode. I fixed that in editing, so hopefully you guys noticed that if you did the last episode, but yeah, that's just how that's gonna go. All right, so now let's check for the clear command. So I'm just gonna do if args, um, if the first argument, so the first thing that they send in the channel is equal to, or ignore case, um, the prefix and then plus our command, which is just clear here. And again, I realized that it's not called main, it's called television, so we're just going to rename that quickly and import that. There we go. So what this will do is just add this thing to the front of clear, making that so we can use tell the clear to actually run the command. So this is our command inside of here. All the stuff we have to do now. What I want to check is I want the command to work like this. So we'll go into Discord quickly. I'll model it. So I want it to type this, and then I want them to type the amount of messages they want to clear from the chat. So I don't know, 50 messages, for example, right? And they'll type that. It'll do whatever. Clear 50 messages. So let's implement that. So we want to check uh, this first argument we've already checked for, which is arg zero over here. Now we want to check for the second argument, which is this. This is technically argument one in Java. So let's check what the value of this is. So what we'll do is we'll do if we want to make sure that they've typed more than one argument. So we'll do args.length, which is just going to get the amount of arguments there are. And then we want to make sure it's uh, if it's less than two, we want to send an error message. So uh, less than two would be not putting this in here and just putting clear. Now clear by itself doesn't do anything. So we want to make sure they have the second argument. So this is where our error message is going to go. I'm just going to put error for now. In fact, I'm just going to do to do error. Uh, Eclipse has this cool feature where it highlights it on the side, so if you want to do something like that. And then we're going to do an else statement, which is where the rest of the code is going to go. So if they do have an argument, it's going to do all this stuff. Now, we're going to do, uh, we're going to basically check for a few things, but uh, in general, first let's type out our deletion method. So we're going to make a list of all the messages that exist. Now, Java lists are basically just, well, they're lists of things. So in this case, we can create a list of messages. So a uh, list of message, simple as that. And then we'll do, we'll call it messages right here. And then we'll set it equal to the amount of messages there are in the channel. So we'll equal to. And then we'll do event.getChannel. We'll get all the channel. And then we'll get the history of the messages. So this will just get all the messages that have been sent in the history of the whole channel. And then we're going to just retrieve the past. We don't want to retrieve the future because how do you even retrieve the future? Anyway, um, and then we want to integer.parse int. And I'll show you what this is in a second. The second argument, which is one in Java. And then we want to do dot complete at the end. Okay, let's explain what we did here because it's a kind of a long thing. Okay, so also we have to import all the stuff. So control shift O, import the util list and message to import correctly. There we go. Okay, so 
by doing event.get channel, well, just getting the channel, and then getting history is, well, getting the history of all the messages that exist, right? Um, we want to retrieve the messages that have been sent in the past. So any message that's been sent in the channel, pretty much. And then, um, oh, geez. And then we get uh, the amount of messages. So basically, this part in here would be the amount of messages we want to select. Now, we're going to use argument one, which is this. So whatever we put in argument one is going to be the amount of messages they delete, right? So we're going to do that. But since argument one is a string and we need it as a number, we want to convert integer.parse int converts a basically text into a number because Java thinks that 50 in this case over here is a string. So we have to convert it to an integer. Simple as, as that. So and then after that, we just dot complete to make sure we get everything done. And then after that, now we have to actually delete the messages. So uh, we'll actually do event dot uh, get channel. So we'll get the channel that the messages are in and then we'll delete messages. And then we'll put the collection of messages that we created called messages. So it'll take whatever these messages are and delete them. Messages delete right here. And then we're just going to dot Q. So it does it. And that's about it. Now, the thing is, this could cause a few errors. So Discord doesn't allow bots to delete more than 100 messages at a time, as well as it can't delete messages older than two weeks. So you want to make sure that if they create a number of messages like 50 and a lot of the messages can't be deleted. So like two weeks or older, um, then it'll spit out an error or if they enter too many messages. So they enter clear 101, which you can't even do. Uh, it'll spit out an error as well. So I have an easy way of doing this. Now, Java has these things called try catch blocks. They'll basically try to run a piece of code. And then if an error exists, it's going to run another piece of code to, you know, fix an error or something supposedly. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a try catch block over here. So try here. And then at the bottom here, just type catch. And then we're going to just for now type exception E so it doesn't error at us. And let's take all this list stuff and put it in the try. So what it'll try to do, it'll try to run the list code and try to delete it. And if it can't delete it, it'll run whatever code is in here. So it's basically an error checking thing. Now I want to check the type of error it is. Now both errors for whenever you type uh, stuff. Well, actually, you know, I'll, I'll just show you. So let me demonstrate what happens when you delete too many messages. So we're going to clear 101 messages, which remember you can't do. It'll spit out an error. Now that's a big error here. And what the error says is message retrieval limit is between one and 100 messages, no more, no less. Limit provided 100. So basically it's saying between one to 100 is what you can send. So we're going to set an actual statement that sends this out in the chat. So you, you know, they know what happens because right now the chat doesn't know if it worked or not. So we're going to basically send out an error. So what we're going to do is we're going to minimize our console for now. And under exception here, we're going to set the type of exception. Let's see if I can still see the window open up console. All right. So here, let's go, let's go quickly look at the message. So what it says is the message error is java.lang.illegal argument exception. So what we want to do is we want to catch this exception, which is called illegal argument exception. So we could literally just copy paste here and paste it over here. And every time this happens, this error happens, it's, it's going to run here. The thing is, whenever it's too many messages or the messages are older than that, it all runs as the same as the same error. So we want to detect which kind of error it is. Um, if it's an error, whether the messages are too much or it or the messages are older. So I'm just going to detect the error for messages are too old. So what we're going to do is just do e dot two string, which is going to take the error message that we saw in the console and just feed it to our program. And then we're going to check if it starts with a certain thing. So this is going to check well if it starts with a certain thing, right? And the thing that it starts with um, in this case is if we open the console once more, I keep closing it. Um, the it starts with this. So I'm going to basically take the part till it says message here. And I'm going to copy that and actually a message retrieval because the other one starts with message as well. So copy up to message retrieval if you do this one and we're going to paste it with over here. And now so whenever the error message is too many messages, it's going to run here. And if it's not too many messages and they're too old, it's going to run down here. Now I'll show a demonstration of that in a second. But for now, let's create an embed. So we're going to create an embed builder to notify that I'm going to create an embed builder just called error is equal to new embed builder here. And if I could type, there we go. And there we go, just import embed builder. So now we're gonna do error. I'm actually just gonna set a color quickly. I'm gonna set a red color, which I've already prepared. I know I'm a little prepared for this video. It's FF3923, there we go. And then we're gonna set the message. So error.set title here. And we're gonna notify that there are too many, actually the messages, yeah, there's too many messages. So too many messages selected, let's quickly do error uh, or let's see if there's an emote red eh, that will work and 
too many messages selected. Let's just do that. So now that too many messages have been selected, we're gonna set a description just telling him how much uh, messages you can send. So we're just gonna do description. And I'm actually just gonna set a very, very useful description. It's gonna be the usage between one to 100 messages can be deleted. And now we're gonna do the good old thing where we send the embed. So event dot get, uh, get channel and then dot send message here. And we're just gonna do build the embed. So error dot build. And then we're going to queue up the message so it sends. And that should do just fine. Remember, save as UTF-8 if you use an emote. I used one here. And let's uh, start the bot. I think the console closed again. I don't know if I stopped the bot. So let's start the bot quickly here. We should see that our bot has loaded. Let's quickly go ahead and type our clear command. And let's type 101 once more. There we go. Too many messages selected. And it'll send an error. And the error will not show in the console. So that's good. So we don't need to have extra errors in the console. Now the thing is, if the messages are too old right now, it'll still spit it out. So let's add a check to make sure that the messages aren't older than two weeks. In the else statement right here, now we're gonna be lazy programmers and we're gonna copy paste. And messages too old is what I'm just gonna type here. Messages too old, and we're just gonna do the same thing. Uh, selected messages are older than two weeks. And there we go, two weeks are older, so mm, I guess we'll describe the same thing. Messages messages older than two weeks cannot be deleted. Alrighty then, so we've got that to work. Now the gaping hole in all this is that uh, we don't have a usage. So if they just run the clear command by itself, it's not gonna say anything. So let's tell them how to use the command. Um, so let's do this. We're just gonna quickly copy paste our embed once more and paste it over here. So to do error, let's fix that quickly. I'm just gonna title it usage so that our code is very nice and organized. So we know what is what and usage. Let's see here, let's title this. Um, Let's title this specify amount to delete. Um, and we'll do that and then we'll spit out the usage. So let's tell them how to use this. So what we'll do is we'll do usage over here and then we'll add in um, our actual prefix here. So what I'll do is I'll actually have the command with the prefix. So let's do television here and dot prefix. And then we're gonna add the command name here. So we're just gonna add clear and then amount of messages, so number of messages. So what this does here, um, I, basically what I did is it's gonna spit out uh, the prefix plus the message. So it's gonna tell them exactly how to run it for their server. The prefix will be in front of the message and also put it inside of a code block, which I didn't end. There we go. So it's gonna put inside of a code block and you'll see it looks pretty nice. And one more thing, let's add a success message. So whenever they run it and it's a successful run, it's going to just put an embed to tell them, oh, we've deleted the messages. So success right here, success. Uh, okay, I'll rename this. And there we go. I'm gonna set a color that is green. So let's see what I ha what do I have as a green color. So I'm gonna put a green color here. So it's I, I got one prepared as well. Two two F F two A. Very simple, nice in green color, and successfully deleted. Let's put a check. One of these successfully deleted, and let's tell them how many messages it deleted. So we'll do successfully deleted, and then let's do the amount of messages. So we can do the same thing, but this time we don't have to parse the integer. To args one. And let's add a period just to be correct. Um, there we go. Okay, let's delete the success description or whatever. We don't need that. And now we have a fully working command for clear. So let me show you how this works. Very simple. So let's start our bot here. We'll just click the run button. Drag console down here again. I don't know why it keeps removing itself. And we'll go back into here. Let's quickly clear out some messages here. So we'll just clear, I don't know, 40. And successfully deleted 40. Um, Probably want to put messages after that if you're actually doing this, but good enough. And um, uh, let's see, clear 101 doesn't work. Let's do clear 500, still should send the same thing. Now I've got a server that has messages that are older than two weeks. So let's test what that looks like. So we'll just do clear and we'll do 100 here for these for some reason. I don't know, 100 is limit, so it works. And selected messages are older than two weeks. Messages older than two weeks cannot be deleted. Exactly what we coded in just works perfectly fine. Now let's also test clear by itself. It says specify amount to delete usage. There we go. It says the exact prefix and the amount of messages we need to use. So that's about it for the clear command. Exactly what you need. All the source code for this video will be down below in the description so you can use it and basically understand how it works. But it's fairly simple. It's it's just checking whether it errors out and if it errors out, it sends a message. And if it doesn't error out, it just deletes the messages. Anyways, guys, that's about it for this episode. I'll have a link down below to my Discord server down below in the description. Also to the bot code so you can see that. Um, but yeah, I just want to plug my Discord server quickly. So yeah, if you have any questions or you have any suggestions for a JDA coding video or anything in general, just join the server. You can talk to me there or just, I don't know, just join it to just be in it. I don't know. Anyways, I'm out. I'll see you in the next one.